So we're back at it. We've had more rain over the last few days, or the whole week here in Perth, so it's been frustrating still. Um, oops, those number plates shouldn't be on there. But the car is going to come off the road today. I've got to pull the gearbox out, pull the diff out, do the diff bushes and the rear main seal. So just got to get it up on some uh, stands and some ramps and get into it. I hopefully want to get it done before the end of the weekend. Today's Friday. I'll start work later this afternoon. Working tomorrow as well, so limited for time. But should be able to get it all out today. And then um, maybe replace the parts tomorrow and possibly start getting it back in. But we'll see how we go today. Because I don't really have the uh, motivation today. But we'll get a start and yeah, see how we go. Well, that was a mission, but we got it in there. It's pretty tight inside the shed, which I was expecting. But Mrs. gave me a hand getting it up on some ramps so we can get a start. I'm just going to jack the back up and get that up on some stands, up as high as I can get it, and um, see how we go. I've just disconnected the battery, um, and we'll get a start on the starter motor first. That'll be the first thing. Now, I'm not sure whether to start the diff or the gearbox. I'll probably start, I'll take the tail shaft out. You've got to take the handbrake off, tail shaft. Mark up the diff where the tail shaft comes off so you can put it back in the right spot. So you get no vibrations when you put it all back together. Um, I'm spewing I couldn't get it in a bit further so I can close the roller door. But it's only going to be here for probably a day or two. Just depending how much I can get done before work every day. I've got... Uh, two days off after tomorrow, so But I don't really want to spend my days off piss farting around if I can get some done today some tomorrow But yeah, we'll see how we go get it up on some stands and get started So that was a mission, we got it up on some stands, got it up high enough to hopefully get the diff out of there. Um, if I have to go higher I can, but preferably that's good enough. I think it should be, by the time it drops down and sags, be close, but we should be able to get it out of there. Um, I think I'm going to start with the diff, I was going to start with the starter motor and take the gearbox out, but now that this is up I might just get this out pretty straightforward this is probably half the bloody trouble is just getting the car up on stands and safe to work on <clears throat> but I've got the big jack there which makes life easy um, so yeah if you're doing your diff at home on the floor a lot of people have dish bush diff bush issue, issues and um, it's not that hard to do at home I've seen comments online of people going oh don't even try it at home but it's really not that hard if you've got a few tools um, it's relatively easy. The hardest part you'll get is actually pressing the new bushes in um, and maybe getting the old ones out. But if they're genuine old ones, they're pretty easy. They only have a like a fiberglass or plastic sort of a housing on them with the rubber bush, so you can get them out quite easily. Um, you just got to cut the rubber and do a bit, but that's pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, it's just getting the new ones in. If you don't have a tool for that, I've just got a bit of threaded bar and. I use two bits of uh, steel plate and use it as like a press tool, which we'll um, get to later. So yeah, once you've got the car up and safe to work on, it's straightforward. You just take out the shock here, which is two bolts, top and bottom, three bolts here on the control blade arm, um, or you can take the two bolts up there, which are up the other end, whichever you like. I take these ones off. Um, you've got two bolts or two nuts either side here. And then also, obviously you've got to take the tail shaft out, but there's an 18mm bolt just there. I'll leave that one to last. I'll crack it now, I'll crack it, but I'll leave it to last just so if anything happens, it's hanging there still. <clears throat> and also, oh, um, this one's here, 
two bolts, they're long bolts, just there, these ones. So it's three, two nuts, one bolt either side, three bolts here, two bolts for the shocky, and that one bolt at the back by the time you get your um, tail shaft out. But tail shaft goes first, so we'll get started on that. We'll get it out. And I forgot to mention this arm here, there's one either side. It just holds the um, the diff cradle to the body. It's just a um, like a brace. Uh, a nut this end and a bolt that end. I think that's a 15 mil nut. I'm not sure, I think that might be 15 as well. Uh, one either side, that's got to come off as well. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. It's not hard to do. All right, so we're under the car. It's safely on the stands, give it a bit of a shake. Feels safe getting under here now. <clears throat> so there's our center bearing, it looks pretty good still, which is a good thing, because they're common as to fail. Um, so all we're doing first is we're gonna take off this yoke here on the, the diff. Uh, or CV, coupling, whatever they call it. So I've just made a couple of marks there so I can put it back in the same spot. But the only other thing you've got to do, sometimes they have these little plastic counterweights um, for balancing. There's some pink paint here from, could be factory, not sure. Um, but yeah, you've got to take note of where these are just so you can put them back on in the same spot. They're just little plastic clips they clip on. Um, you wouldn't think they're a counterweight because there's nothing to them, but um, yeah, they are. So I'm just going to take a couple of photos of those um to take note of where they are and take them off and then we'll start getting out these 10 mil bolts just be careful with these because they can strip so make sure you've got some good purchase get some good tools use a ring spanner if you can just to crack them um just trying to get a socket in with this piece here is a bit of a pain so you crack them with a ring spanner and then take them out with whatever you can um then it's just the two center bearing bolts here one two and the same with these. Try not to ugga dugger these out. Try and just crack them with a, I'm using a quarter, quarter inch ratchet for these, just because the, the threads in here are pretty uh, shitty. They can strip. Um, so just nice and gentle with all this stuff. They're only small bolts. These ones here, you can tighten them up. I'd tighten them up with a spanner as well. You can use a ratchet, but just use spanners. And then the only other thing is these three bolts here on the donut. Um, you can just take them off these big ones here. Um, this whole donut will come off with it because these these ones here actually got 18 mil nuts on the other side so either or you can chuck a spanner on the back and take these ones out just hold the nuts on the back and leave the donut on or you can just take these three out and bring the donut off with you either or doesn't really matter but again i just take note of where you take that out just so everything goes back where it came from as you can see they've done the same here so yeah just uh, just mark everything and you shouldn't have any issues with vibrations when you put it back together all right so i've taken the three bolts out of the um, donut coupling uh, still got the two bolts in for the center bearing they're loose though um, just crack those i've got the 10 mils out of the cv at the back um, i usually take these bolts out up here on the coupler um, I get a spanner on the back where is it I've got a sacrificial spanner 18 mil spanner that I got from super cheap I think it was like two dollars um, and yeah I normally just get up behind um, the nut and just uh, the bolt and just hold the nut on these ones but um, I've just taken the, the bolts out from here this time They're out of the coupler the 18 mil bolts and I'm just going to use this as a reference, as a pink mark here. So when I pull this off, um, I'll know that this is facing down. And when I pull this off, I'll put a mark on the, um, I don't know, the shaft behind here to make sure that these three holes marry up to where they were before as well. I don't think it really matters up this end, but we'll do it anyway, just as a precaution, just to save any hassles. So the tail shaft's pretty much out. Just got to take these bolts out and it will come out. So that's the tail shaft out. So I've just dropped it down and I've made a little mark here just to know that this, that's roughly where this was facing. This is down. And on the other one, the pink mark will go down when I put it back together. So 
It's just as a reference, so it's all back how it was. Um, they do get a bit stuck in here, in the in the diff here. So all you do is you just get a little bar. You can use a small hammer, but a little bit of gentle persuasion. So all you need to do is just hit around the CV boot around here and just spin it, put the car in neutral and just spin this around and just tap it all the way around as you're spinning it and sort of put some pressure on it that way. So pull it and just tap it as you're hitting it around. Just sort of, that's all it needs. You don't have to go whacking it and yeah, it'll, it'll eventually pop out. They just get a bit seized in there. So now while I'm under here, I'm gonna put the phone down and um, start tucking out some of these bolts and start getting this ready to drop down. Uh, this is the only exhaust hanger you'll need to remove because this bracket here is actually welded to the frame. If you look here, to the subframe. And I had these off the other day when I was doing the exhaust. So just slide the rubber off, either this at the top or bottom, doesn't matter. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's get into it, get this done. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is we need to disconnect the handbrake. I completely forgot about it. Um, it's really easy. This whole assembly is attached to the diff. That's your cable there. So all it is is this um, piece here comes off. Um, there's just a 10 mil nut here. You can't see it's a nut, but it's just covered in gunk. Um, it's deep, so if you can get a, a long socket on there, um, it's a lot quicker, or a ratchet spanner onto this 10 mil. Um, I've got a long socket on my gun so I'm hoping come on that that works these are the things that like it's a really easy job and it can be done in seconds if you've got the right tools if you don't it can take fucking ages if you're trying to wind that off with just a normal spanner so that's not deep enough so I'm just gonna have to use a spanner to get it out to about here where I can get that socket on and then just use the gun to wind it all the way off. So they'll do that. All right, so I've got the nut out. Uh, another thing too, you've got to hold this, this will spin, this whole uh, thread. It's got a squared off uh, shaft at this end. So you just put a little adjustable spanner on there. I don't know if you can see it. And just hold that from spinning. Um, that come off easy. So now all that holds it on, That's rounded off, so that's rounded to sit in the back of the plate there. So make sure it goes back in that way, the rounded end facing in. Um, all that holds these in are these little plastic clips. I'll see if I can get it out. I'll put this down. These white things here are just a plastic clip. <coughs> Gonna be hard to do and film at the same time. I'll get one off and show you. I've just spun them around to this side, um, so they're easy to get off. So they're just a, like a split piece of plastic, and they just sit on the end of the handbrake cable just to lock it in, almost like it to work as like a circlip, but they're just plastic, so they just pop off like that. That's all it is. You think is that it? Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's it get the other one off and then we're about to lower this thing down onto the ground and they snap easily too so just be a bit mindful of that but they come off in one piece so then what you do now, put this out of hand, pull them through, like that, and that's it, it's ready to lift down. So I made a start getting this lower um, trailing arm out, um, I forgot to mention also you got to get the uh, ABS sensors here. It's a real speed sensor for the ABS system. It's just an 8mm bolt. Sometimes they can be tight and they can snap. So just don't use anything big on it. Just use like a little quarter and just do it by hand with a ratchet. 
don't put an ugga dugga on it or anything like that. And you can put some penetrating spray on it and just wiggle this as you pull it out. Um, Cause they, yeah, they can be tight. But yeah, just as I was looking here, this bush here is completely fucked. Uh, it shouldn't have that much play in it. I'm trying to get it on the camera. So it's completely stuffed. So on the work order, they've said lower control arm. So I assumed it was these arms here, these lowers. So I've ordered brand new ones of those. Um, so I will put those on, but um, yeah, that's gonna need replacing as well. You can press the bush out up there, out of these arms, but I know in the other car, the one over there, the wreck, um, it's got nolithone bushes up here. They've been done at some stage, so. I'm just going to swap these arms out with the ones out of the other wreck and that'll get rid of that issue. So I'm getting quite forgetful. I've also forgot to mention that you need to get the brake calipers off as well, which is pretty easy. You got two options. You can either take the whole um, bracket out, which is just two 15 mil bolts, or you can take the, uh, I don't know, the uh, caliper off the bracket, which is also two 15 mil bolts. Either way, I've just taken the whole thing off. You've got the 15 mil out anyway for doing these arms, so it's just the two bolts, really straightforward. Just these two here, and that just comes off. They might be a bit tight, but just get a little hammer, little, just give them a bit of a tap, come off straight away. And just tie it up out the way. Try not to put too much tension on these rubber hoses because especially being so old, um, they can get a, get a little bit brittle and um, start to crack and perish. So you just be mindful of that. Yeah, we've got a bit of cleaning to do while we're under here, but that's why we're here. And also, just with these uh, threads, because there's such a long uh, thread sticking out there, or a pin, um, you need a deep socket or a spanner to get onto those. You're not going to be able to get a normal size socket. So a deep 18mm is your friend. Or if you've got a good ratchet spanner, that would help. Just to make life easy. But a normal 18 mil spanner will do, just be a, a bit of a longer process. But we'll keep going. Now I'm just taking these um, 18 mil bolts down. I'm not going to take them right out, but I'm going to take them, all well, the nuts, down to the bottom of the thread. And then I'll take this bolt completely out. I'm just doing it while I'm on this side. But a little tip, um, these are in the way. Well, they're not in the way, but you can take the whole spring out just to give yourself some more room. It just pulls straight out. Once you've got the shocky out, you can just pull them out easily. And it helps as well because when you lower the diff down, um, if these lower arms touch the ground, at least they'll compress and you won't have the spring in there trying to keep it up because you need it to drop as compress as much as you can to get it low enough to slide out and do what you want to do with it. So yeah, just take the spring out, make life easy. Well, that's this side pretty much done. Um, didn't take long at all. It's the hardest part, like I said, is just getting the jack up and getting your tools out and piss farting around. Once you've got all the tools here and you sort of know where you're headed, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I've got this long bolt out completely. I've got these lowered down to the bottom of the thread. So that'll just be the last thing. I want that to hang so at the end, when it's all ready to come out, I can move the jack to a better position because the cradle of these is a bit of a pain in the ass. You'll need a bit of board to put across the bottom to get good purchase. Otherwise the, the dip will just rock as soon as you lower it down on the jack where it is. But it's just there just to make it safe for me to get un, up and down. I'll just use that as a, like a safety measure while I'm climbing up around underneath. Um, but yeah, this side's down. We'll move over to the other side and get started. Should have it out pretty soon. So over on the other side now, it was like 10, 15 minutes. That's all ready to come out now. Um, I've lowered these down to the end of the thread. Well, as far enough as I need. And I've left the 18 mil in up the top, like I said. Uh, the only thing I'm having an issue with is these wheel speed sensors. They've been a pain in the ass to come out. I haven't put any spray on them or anything yet, but I'll, uh, I'll get onto that now. Um, but apart from those, it's pretty well ready to come down. You. Also, I've seen the uh, sway bar links are uh, 
have definitely seen better days. I'm surprised they didn't pick up on those. Um, and also this control arm, or this blade arm, is fucked as well. So definitely change those out with the nolithane ones from the other car. I don't know if they're the ones that he actually meant. Because these control arms here, the lower ones, don't actually have any play in them. So they could have meant uh, been what he was talking about. But I did ask him, I said, which arms are they? Because I knew there was two lowers and they said the lower control arm. So I know this is the trailing arm or blade arm. And I would have called that a lower control arm and this an upper control arm. So could have been my fault uh, or could have been just him not explaining it correctly. So, but either way, they are flogged out and I've got some new ones, new lower arms anyway. So I might as well throw them in. That way at least I know the car's good. Why is it that always the small jobs seem to be the hardest jobs? Or well, the ones that are most time consuming? Got it out, it was just full of crud in the end. Um, I know you can take the back seat out and unclip it from inside and pull it out that way and just leave it bolted in there. But I wanted to get it out and give it a good clean anyway because I'm going to probably clean this whole um, cradle out while it's out. Uh, clean it up just so I can put it back in and feel good about doing it when it's all clean um just got to do the other one on the other side and then i'm going to rearrange the jack take these four bolts out or nuts off and then we'll do the main one and then we'll get it out i'll put a big piece of wood here it goes under the um whole thing just to try and balance it like that because it would have just fallen backwards otherwise and there it is, all lowered down, come down easily. Um, I did forget to take the hanger off the exhaust, but there was no weight on it. So I'll just pop that off easily, that one there. And that's it. I can drag that out now and do what I need to do. But I'm not going to drag it out because I'm only going to be doing it there outside of the shed and it's going to be in the rain. So I'll leave it in here overnight. I am going to clean up all of these wheel arches as well a little bit um, just clean up tidy up a few things probably clean up the threads of all the bolts that I've just taken out um, I normally like to give it a just a quick coat of paint but um, yeah I don't think I'm gonna bother I'll just clean it up and I might just spray it with some with some WD-40 and soak it like that it's just dust I think so It'll come up pretty good. Couldn't be bothered waiting, so I decided to drag it out and just have a quick look at it. Um, dragged out nice and easy. It's covered in shit. It's going to need a good clean up. So here's your factory diff bushes here. Uh, they are the factory rubber ones. And I've just bought rubber type replacement ones just because they're easier to put in. Um, you can see here there's a what a lot of people don't do is uh, sit the new bushes back in this far they'll get them in and then because you can't it's hard to get them past this uh, past sitting flush they think that's enough but it's not because then you have issues of your actual diff this arm here or the casing fouling on the on the cradle just here so that's why you need to have it in that deep so just a bit of a tip So that's it for today. Time to go in and get ready for work. Um, that probably took, I guess, about two hours, maybe two and a half hours. That's including piss farting around, getting the car up on the stands and everything, um, and recording. Not a hard job to do if you've got the tools. Um, and the big jack definitely helps. So, yeah, I think tomorrow I'm going to clean this up high pressure hose it, clean it up, uh, get the bushes changed over. I'll just clean it up. Normally I'll I'll go a bit overboard with cleaning it, but I want it back in the car. So I'll just give it a quick clean, um, new bushes and chuck it back in without getting too carried away with it. And then hopefully if I can get this in tomorrow, I might even be able to get the gearbox started to start unbolting that, but we'll see how we go. I'm trying to get as much done on my work days that I can. So on my days off, I'm not having to be out here all day 
like I have been. A couple of days break will be good. Come back tomorrow.